Welcome to the Nuclear Snail channel. In this episode I'll show you how to make this. A post-apocalyptic aluminum van brace. So here's what it looks like on camera. There's the bottom side. And let's see some photos now. So if you're new to my channel, in this video I'm going to be talking more about how to make this sort of van brace. I will be skipping a lot of specific details which I've covered in other videos. So if something isn't clear to you, check out the rest of my channel. Also I do apologize for the coarse voice and uh, sometimes maybe low levels of energy throughout this video. I've caught the flu, so how the hell ever one manages to do that in May. But I managed to do that, so that's why I sound the way I sound. Sorry about that. Keep in mind it's just one possible way to build something. When you're crafting, especially for the post-apocalyptic genre, there are thousands if not millions of ways to make anything, so this is not a dogma. Also if you're generally into armor crafting, check out the channel of David Guyton, he has some advanced techniques on that. Um, but I'm gonna show you my methods anyway, and how I made this. So without further ado, let's dive right into it and get crafting. So it all starts with a paper sketch. Just simple paper, cut and folded. So starting with the simpler thing, the bottom splint, pretty much just a piece of metal later on, which will be slightly bent to accommodate the uh, forearm shape. And on this side, the top piece and the bottom piece will be just connected with some uh, stretch belt. So it won't be adjustable, it will be just slightly stretchy, but it will be permanently fixated in place. And here, on this side, which is closer to me, there is gonna be some buckles. Two of them, I think, or maybe three, we will see. This top piece, as you can see here, it has a cutout right here, so it's uh, longer on the bottom and shorter on the top which allows me to move my arm better. And this top piece, you can't see it in the sketch yet, but it will actually be consisting out of three pieces. So these uh, thin side pieces, I will actually cut them as separate stripes. This one as well. And they will be just butt to butt next to each other, also connected with belts or just some solid piece of uh, fabric whatever will be the padding of this. I'm just gonna cut it into pieces. That is my last resort. Get it? No? Okay. And if you were wondering how I have attached this paper to myself to check it all out in the first place... Ow! Double-sided adhesive tape. Now let's cut these out of metal and then see where we're going. Alright, so the sheets of paper are attached to the 1.5 millimeter thick aluminum sheet now. I attach them using a spray adhesive, same way I do for stencils. So it's just a spray adhesive in a can. And the point is not that it's non-permanent, it could be permanent in this case, but the point is that they are attached over the entire surface, so when I cut, they won't be flopping around, around under my blade, which would be annoying. And uh, before you ask where I get aluminum, I order it online. Let's cut this, and uh, the way I'm gonna cut this is I'm gonna cut out this entire shape first, and then I'm gonna do the two small cuts, separating this into three pieces, so that those pieces align nicely.
Now let's make the edges of this nicer and smoother and straighter. So that's what it looks like by now. Now let's finish it off with a power file to give it a bit of a nicer bevel around here. Focus camera, so I want more bevel. As you saw in my um, metal armor technique video, it's literally the same technique. Okay, so here are the parts with the bevels. I want to have two circular holes, a smaller one here and a bigger one here for this mesh effect that you see in the finished product. So for this we're gonna be using hole saws. Some of you know this only as the shredder tool, but we're actually gonna be using the shredder as it's intended to be used originally this time. It's a hole saw and um, it's best if you have thick ones like this. These ones um, that you use to make a shredder are not really designed to cut aluminum that well, but they will do the job and I only have this one in a large size. So first of all, I'm gonna sketch those uh, circular holes. So the first one is gonna go around here. And now let's pick the size of the second one. So it lo looks aesthetic. This might be it. Yeah, this one looks nice. So if you compare these two, well, it's gonna be compressed, so like this. A bit of a size contrast, but not too much. And around the center of it is our mark. Okay, so here's how this part looks now. I also did some inner bevel here using my power file. And now I'm gonna distress it using the exact method from my video which is titled uh, Real Metal Armor Post-Apocalyptic Technique or something like this. Just look for metal armor on my channel. So we're gonna skip ahead to after I apply that technique. You can just watch that video after you finish watching this one to know how the technique goes. All right. Here is what it looks like so far. Of course, it's right now just held in place by double-sided adhesive tape. And yes, these are not perfect bends, but hey, it's post-apple. I could achieve better bends if I A, um, just spend a lot more time with it, or just use a tool called the brake, which I don't have. So if you have a brake in your workshop, then you know what to do with it. And yeah. The surface effect is okay so far. I didn't paint it all yet. Oh, it's coming off. It's really all about to fall off any second, but all in all it fits the shape of my arm. And you also see that I did some bends here, like this. And this also goes for the bottom part. So again, that is uh, how to do this is shown in my metal armoring technique video. And also, again, the channel of David Guyton. Um, you should check that out because David shows some way more advanced armoring techniques. But for me, this simple stuff I'm doing is enough. So, yeah. Here we have a piece of thin perforated aluminum uh, sheet. I've actually cut this with my scissors. And I've put this inside of my main aluminum sheet. And it's held in place by this double-sided adhesive tape. And what I'm doing now is using my large screwdriver to press it right in there so it conforms to the shape like I did here already. I can, I think you can see it on the reflection. There is a nice hard bend here. There is none yet here. So I'm making this thin perforated sheet conform to the main one. And it needs to conform really snugly. 
So I'm using a lot of pressure. I'm actually gonna stand up for this. There we go. Whoops. Went through on this one, but it's okay. Looks like battle damage. Just gonna bend it away a bit back inside so it doesn't cut anyone. And now I'm gonna trim away this excess. I don't need this. Again, just using my scissors because why not? This is a really thin aluminum sheet, so it works with the scissors. And there we go, already looks pretty cool. Alright, now we need some mounting holes and we need them here, here, here and here. Originally I thought maybe I would get away just with this and two holes here, but no, we need four on each corner. So let's do that. Drilling from the inside here because of the mesh, I just don't want it to move away or something or to fall off. I'm gonna do the same thing for this under piece and for these long pieces just one hole on each end is sufficient. What else it did now is add some additional tape here as well as here because it will be holding it in place against shifting like this up and down and side to side. Now we want a piece of canvas to connect these parts together. I found this piece of fabric in my junk crate and uh, this used to be a shoulder from a German military vest. So we're gonna use this, it's nice and thick, and in fact, you can even put additional padding in there, which is exactly what I'm gonna do, so it all looks thicker and more like an actual armor, because an armor without padding is like a life without love. And uh, then we're gonna mount these parts onto this, and it will look cool. So here is that padding I was talking about, just a piece of foam. Again, if you just don't have these parts improvise, find something else, just two layers will do. Or even if you're going minimalistic without padding, just some piece of sturdy fabric is what you need at the core. Just using the regular technique here, you saw this in my last video, you see it in my every work bolts and washers and nuts and of course they go from the inside so that the bolt head is facing the skin and we mount it like this through a hole and here I can just add a nut without a washer but I will add washers anyway for visuals Alright, now I've attached the, the metal pieces to this nice padding and it all looks nice, feels nice so far. Just one problem, um, I don't have any padding of the same sort left for this piece. Well, technically I would have it on the two sides. So what I'm gonna do now is detach it and just move it all up in this direction by basically this width so that on this side I have enough uh, padding to put under this piece so yeah I'm showing it to you because you're gonna make mistakes like this as well and now I'm actually gonna do the same step in this step uh, no <laughs> and now I'm actually also gonna do the next step which is attaching the stretch belts in the same step because that makes sense 
So the way I'm gonna layer it is here's the padding, here's the stretch, and this end of the stretch will go to the bottom part of the membrane later on. But for now I just attach it on this side and I attach it under the metal plate. So this way when it wraps around the arm it's gonna be pressing down on the padding. If you put it under the padding then um, A the shearing force on this belt will be greater so it's uh, more likely to tear out, wear out with time because it's just gonna be held down by the bolt or the rivet or whatever you're gonna be using. So it's better to put it over the padding. And also it looks cooler. It just wraps the padding around your forearm better. So that's what I'm gonna do. It doesn't have to be stretched by the way. I just really like stretch because it leaves you a bit of leeway and it also makes the piece snuggle against your body but not too tightly. And then the armor plate goes on top. That's it. We do the same on the other side. And fast forward to when I've moved all these plates around. Okay, here it is, repositioned and I've already cut off a piece of the edge of it for this underarm part. So, um, this one actually doesn't fit perfectly. You see here that it's missing a chunk, but it's one of those situations uh, where I can say, hey, it's post-apocalyptic crafting, so whatever, good enough. I didn't do this a lot and uh, neither should you, but sometimes um, it is a viable tactic because, I mean, it is good enough in this case for what I'm doing. So don't use it as an excuse to just um, wing everything but sometimes it's okay and will look just fine or even intentionally like this because you know someone crafted this in a hurry in the post-apocalyptic world so yeah now we're gonna attach this all together on this side the one facing you right now holy shit. here it is so I'm gonna connect these belts underneath this armor plate now and then you can actually see how it looks without it falling over. Here's how I put it together. So here's the piece flipped over so the arm goes like this and this one is gonna be flipping over like this and closing here so the belts would go like this. Right so here's the padding with the bolts in it. I take this bolt which would be the closest to this side Connected here, I already made the hole. Get the fuck on. <clears throat> nope, I gotta make the hole again. I could never make enough of a hole. Jesus Christ, man, getting the stretch belt through a bolt is really annoying, but it works like this. There we go. Great. And on this side, since the forearm is becoming slimmer in this direction, because here are all the muscles and here is less muscle, the distance on the belt needs to be a bit less. So something like this will do. There it is. Trim the excess, but not too much. For the case, you have to actually go back and adjust it to be a bit wider. Let's check. Yeah. That is a nice distance. The distance between this and this is around same as between this and this. So that's good for me. So now I'm just gonna slap the plate on top. I'm obviously not gonna do it like this. I'm just showing you how it will look. There we go. Stretch, stretch, stretch. And this goes around the arm nicely. Obviously I can't close it yet because I don't have any locking mechanism here but you can see that it's starting to take shape. 
And uh, before I proceed with the locking mechanism, I'm just going to remove, um, well, first fasten and then remove all those uh, bolts sticking out. I mean, the ends of the bolts, not the entire bolts, obviously. So fast forward to that. Alright, so uh, Darcy here is holding his arm. Don't be freaked out, it's not my third arm. It's just my mate. So we want to have this so the buckles are right here. So that means that we connect the belts here and here. You can release your arm now, like this. And on the other side, there's gonna be some loops connected to this. So that's what we're gonna do now. And here it is. So the bottom part holds this, the clips. And on the other side, we have the D-rings. And now let's dirty the whole thing up. Okay, and here is the finished result. You already saw it at the start of the video, but let's take a look at it again. I'm really, really happy with it. Added this stencil here. And also it slips on and off. So you don't actually have to open the buckles. And that is thanks to this stretch. Without it, that would be kind of difficult, but the stretch makes it more comfortable to wear and also more comfortable to put on and off. Okay, that's it for this episode. Have fun crafting your own van braces. And if you do, please post pictures of your finished van braces to my Facebook page. You will find the link in the description down below. Also, feel free to share this video with your tribe, your crafting group, or whoever else. I hope it was useful to you, and if so, and especially if you're a regular viewer, please consider supporting me on Patreon. That's the first link in the video description. I'm not making any money from YouTube, almost at all, it's really minimal, so my Patreon supporters are the ones that keep this channel going and developing. I will see you in the next episode. Until then, hail the snail!